Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to continue my discussion from last video where I discussed about what is a class, what are the different constituents of a class. So a class is nothing but a placeholder for code or a place where the actual code is written, the logic of an application. And the logic itself does not reside within just within the class. It is the functions within the class which contains logic. So a class consists of one or many functions and then it has variables which are defined inside the class and then you can create properties for returning the variables or setting the variables and then you can have one or many constructor and the constructor is used during the construction of a class. When an object of a class is created that's when the constructor is invoked. Now, in the last video, I also discussed about the concept of having multiple constructor. So you can have one or many constructor. Similar to that, you can have same function name repeated more than one time. And this phenomenon is called overloading. And it is a concept of object-oriented programming, which is essentially called polymorphism. And polymorphism is a concept where a single function can be defined more than one times with different signature. Now, for a function to be overloaded, meaning the function can be written in the same class more than one time, the function needs to have different signature for its parameters. The return type is immaterial. It doesn't matter if you have the same return type or different, but if the parameters are same, you cannot overload a function or it's going to throw an error if you try to overload a function with the same set of parameter. The parameter number has to be different or the type of the parameter has to be different. So here we can declare it as let's say int and search user and if we take the int age it is throwing an error it's saying that the member it has the same parameter types so return type as i mentioned does not make any difference so we might as well can keep it as void but we have to change the parameter either we add a new parameter to change the count of the parameter or we change the type of the parameter. So in our case, what we are going to do is we'll change the type of the parameter from int to string. And we can take, let's say the name of the user as a parameter. And now we are not seeing any problem anymore because they have two different types for the input parameter. So this is what is method overloading. Now, next thing I wanted to discuss is after discussing method overloading is the concept of inheritance in object oriented programming language, which is nothing but subclassing. So subclassing is, the con is a concept where we can create another class, which is going to derive from this class. And once a class derives from a base class, the subclass inherits all the behavior of the base class. Meaning when we define a subclass, the subclass is going to have the same behavior as the base class. So if we create a class now called child user provider, then you can see the name for this class here is by mistake, I kept it as child user provider because it's a user provider. So let's go and create a new class called child user provider. So if we create a class called child user provider, let me fix the namespace. And here, if we mark it as user provider, meaning the child user provider 
is deriving the base class user provider and the colon signature says that we are deriving from the class which is defined here. If it's not a class, if it is something else, then the behavior will be different, which we are going to discuss is in one of the future video. But for today's video, let's just focus on subclassing. So once we define a child user provider, if we go to program.cs here, and if we change this from user provider to child user provider, and which doesn't have a constructor, you can see it inherits the search user and the connection property of the user provider by default. Now, another thing we discussed is about protected member. We said that the protected member is accessible only inside of the derived classes, but not publicly. So if we make this connection variable as protected. Now, if we go to child user provider, and let's say we have a constructor for child user provider. Here, if we do this dot connection, you can see we can access the connection from the base class. This is not the right usage, but this goes to show that you can access protected member of a class outside of the class as long as it is a derived class. So this is how protected member works. The next thing in terms of the inheritance and when it comes to polymorphism, we discussed about overloading where we overloaded the same method twice. There is another concept called overriding. Overriding is basically the concept where a function in the base class or the behavior of a function in the base class can be overridden by a function in the child class. So for example, if we want to change the behavior of the search user in any of the child classes, we have to define this function as virtual. When you define this function as virtual, what happens if we go into child user provider here, we can override this function. And the keyword for that is override. And as you can see, it shows search user here. So we can override this. And here we can say name is equal to, let's say name dot two lower. And then we do a console dot write line of name. Now, the base class did not had any implementation. In the child class, we have overridden the behavior of the search user of the base class with a new implementation. And this is called method overriding. And this is one of the ways of achieving polymorphism in C sharp programming language. So now, as you could see, once we create a base class and child class relationship, the protected members of the base class can be accessed by the child class, as well as the child class can go and override the implementation of a base class. There is another concept which is called hiding implementation. So here, if the child class goes ahead and defines a void search user with int h, what is going to happen is, and here you can have this, you can see there's a green squiggly. It is saying that the search user inside of this child user provider hides the inherited member search user inside of user provider, okay? And it's, it is just a warning. And if we provide a new keyword here, so public new, this warning is going to go away. But we are still hiding the behavior of search user of the base class in this child class. 
So the fact that we are hiding the behavior does not change just because we gave a new keyword in the subclass, but it is just letting us know that we know that we are hiding a behavior, so we are intentional about it. That's about it. Otherwise, just giving a new, the function does not behave like the way override does. And what do I mean by that? So to do that, I can show you an example here. So we have overridden the implementation of search user with string and hidden the implementation of search user with int. So here if we go, if we use var, which is as good as declaring like this, child user provider user provider equal to new child user provider, and then user provider dot search 20. So search of 20 in base class to the console dot write line. And in the child class, the search user just do a console dot write line of age. It does not do the age is this. And the search user with name in the base class do not have any implementation. But in the child class, it is just doing a two lower and printing out the name. So now if we go back to the program class and we call search user with int, and let's say we also called search with a, with a string. And then similarly, what we do is we can always, when it comes to inheritance, we can always define the type of the user as base type. So we can call it as user provider one. And we can do equal to new of child user provider. And then what we can do is we can do user provider one dot search user, same, that's past 20. And user provider one dot search user. And let's pass the same thing. Test child two. So now if we run this application, you will see a difference in behavior between a overridden method versus a hidden method. And as you can see here, for the overridden, for the hidden method, if we go back, so search user, search user with the int is the hidden implementation. So here it printed 20 in the first case, which is not the implementation of the base class, but implementation of the child class. And for the user string, search user, it is printing child test, which is the implementation of the which is the implementation of the child class because we have overridden this. So both case it is doing the overridden right? In this case where we define the type as a child type. In both class it is going and trying to print the behavior of the child classes implementation. So here, because the object type is child, it is just going and printing the name in lowercase and age as just integer. And that is what happened, name, and this is child. When we declared the type as a base type, but object as child type, the implementation, which is hidden, you can see is not showing up, meaning the child classes implementation is not showing up. It is showing the base classes implementation because the type defined is of base class. So it does not respect 
the hidden implementation because it is not properly overridden. So it goes ahead and uses the implementation of base class, which is here the age is age. So it is doing that. But for the next one, which is search user with name, because it is properly overridden, it goes ahead and prints the implementation of the child class. So that is the fundamental difference between how override and new keyword works is when how you define the type, how you declare the type of the object, not what instance it is pointing to. So this is a very critical thing to understand between overriding and hiding an implementation is that it's going to have unexpected behavior, meaning it is not going to print out the implementation of child object, even if the object is of type child, it will go ahead and print out the implementation or execute the implementation of base type because the type of the object is base type, though it is pointing to an uh, instance of the child class. So that is a nuance you need to understand when it comes to overriding versus hiding an implementation from base class. So this is how base class child classing work. And base class child class is very handy when it comes to sharing code or sharing logic across multiple classes inside of a particular project. One thing to keep in mind is C sharp do not allow multiple inheritance, meaning you cannot inherit from multiple classes from for a child class. You can inherit only from one class. Whereas you can implement multiple interfaces. Interface is a concept that is something we're going to talk about in my next video. So this is all I wanted to cover for this video, mainly how inheritance works and what is the difference between overloading and overriding, which are nothing but uh, implementation of polymorphism in C sharp. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.